I'm Mary Tabbitt. And I'm Bruce Crawford. And we are from, from Growing, Growing Green. Green. Yes. So, so, Bruce, you're the host. Oh, Forgot thanks. to give you your title, right? <laughs> thank you. Um, anyway, where are we? Where are we? We yeah. are at a wonderful house at the shore. Yeah. Now, when you think of the shore, what do you typically think of? Just, you know, summer, summer, summer house. Yeah. Summer house. Yeah. Summer house. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's really unique about this house is that not only is it a wonderful summer house and very colorful, as you can see behind mm -hmm. us, it's also a New Jersey Nursery and Landscape Award winner for 2021 and it's year round. So what happens here is enjoyment throughout 12 months of the year, not just three or four. Oh my gosh, and I got a chance to see the backyard. Yes. It's amazing, Isn't right? Isn't that amazing? Oh really? man. <laughs> so that's more than just a family too. Let me tell you, this place is an enjoyment for a lot of people. So that's the fun part about this. That's right. So, so as right. we walk around, we're gonna be looking at not only the colorful parts, but the parts that are going to give interest in other times of the season. We're also going to look at the construction, because yes. there's a lot of interesting construction details that are done here that are very sensitive for a shore community. And I think they should be pointed out and uh, really developed on other designs and other projects. So, I agree. Wonderful place. I agree. All right, so let's get going. Let's do that indeed. All right. I'm here with Rusty Bell. Rusty is the designer of what we're standing in front of and enjoying right now. So as I look around, I mean, this is really awesome. I love the pool. But what are some of the other elements that are here that really make this place great for socializing and partying? Ah, thanks, Bruce. Uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, to uh, have us here and go over the job that we did. But uh, the backyard right here is set up with several different amenity areas with the outdoor kitchen uh, right here and the wraparound bar. Uh, with all the stools, we have the fire pit area over here and uh, sitting areas to uh, serve when you're cooking. And uh, we have the uh, fireplace down below with the uh, pergola over top and wrapped around with some beautiful roses and other plantings. I mean, I really do enjoy this. So when we were talking earlier, so Down to Earth Landscaping is not a small company. So how many projects do you run at once? Anywhere from uh, 8 to uh, 15. Yeah, yeah. So, so when you look at this, this is not something that a person could just say, well, this weekend I think I'm going to start to do an outdoor project. This is something you really have to find the right company to do. Correct. Yeah, this, this is a large project and it took a long time to uh, get organized and mm -hmm. set up and sold and then basically built. Was, uh, did the homeowner say, I want this, this, and this, or did he give you free reign and you just sort of had fun with it? Well, it's, there's a little bit of some free reign, but uh, I always have conversations with the customers mm -hmm. as to what they want to do with certain areas. Mm -hmm. Do they like to entertain? Do they have kids? Do they have dogs? Um, and then we get into the, uh, the functional aspects of what they want in certain areas, and then I kind of put it all together. Excellent, so. excellent. And we were also talking about... Um, about the amount of uh, impermeable pavement right. that you can have. Because when you look around, obviously you go, wow, there's, there's quite a bit of pavement. So uh, how did you sort of um, work your way around some of the, the uh, what the township was requiring? Okay, well, it's, we kind of work a lot with uh, Mary Hearns, who is the architect for the home. And she set some parameters with the scope of what the permeable was allowed here. Mm -hmm. And so we did the driveway as a uh, permeable uh, driveway, which gives us 50% of the allowance for that area. Okay. Belmar is one of the towns that allows us to do that with okay. permeable pavers. Okay. A lot of towns don't, and you gotta kind of work with the parameters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so and we did do a couple of the other walkways set up still as permeable, although they're not really uh, a permeable paver, but we did it to be green and mm -hmm. just to help uh, control the water a little bit better. Certainly, certainly. So, so and I really appreciate that because, you know, again, in this day and age, we're really thinking a lot about sustainability. Um, you know, I have three children, so I really want to leave the world a better place for them. And sure. uh, we're all thinking of that. So, uh, and Lynn, when you look at some of the planting that's done around here, you know, what are some of the things that go into your mind when you're designing something? Because obviously, this is a beautiful day. It's 72 degrees, sun's out, but it's not always like this here, is it? No, no. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, obviously the uh, homeowners wanted something to be a, a sure look. Mm -hmm. So we have the hydrangeas, we have the grasses, we have the crepe myrtles, we have some roses. 
Um, we have other plants, uh, you know, with the uh, the hardy uh, hibiscus, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and um, uh, I guess the uh, the layering of grasses from you know that will actually die back in the winter time. So you do you have that winter look of grasses, and then we have some of the Lariah piece. So you have that year round mm -hmm. evergreen. Uh, the Helleborus, which we have out in the front, is a, uh, a perennial that flowers actually in the wintertime. Yes. So we have plants uh, that flower. The, the camellias that are out in the front mm -hmm. will flower early. Uh, and then, you know, everything just sort of just keeps going from the red buds to the birches to the, um, all the other plants. And it just spins around to the roses and the uh, crepe myrtles. And uh, we have uh, the white fringe trees on the outside mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, magnolia in the front, the birch. So there's uh, quite a few plants that are uh, native yes, and yes. help with the sustainability and, sure. you know, so. Yeah, and I, it's interesting too, because a lot of people think of ornamental grasses just for the summer, but they provide some fantastic winter interest as well. Right. So, uh, so I think as we uh, take a little walk about, I think we'll also want to emphasize and take a look at some of the things that you call layering and see if we can define that a little bit further. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So I think we have some good examples of layering here. So uh, and I, I think, I know I have heard a lot of people talk about layering, but very few people do it. <laughs> and what they ultimately do is they'll put the shortest in the front and the tallest in the back, and it just sort of works its way up like a stage. And it looks very expected, dull. So uh, talk a little bit about how you break that up a little bit and make it more interesting and dramatic for the homeowner. Okay, well, in this area here, we have the liriope, which I love to use as a, it's an evergreen grass. It flowers in August. Mm -hmm. And you've got the um, uh, seasonal flowers around it mm -hmm. with the hamlin, uh, the penicetum right off to the mm -hmm. side, yep. which yep. you sort of spike back up a little bit and you have the boulder with a little accent stone. And on the other side, we have the ajuga, the uh, burgundy glow, which is a really beautiful colored uh, um, lower creeping perennial. Mm -hmm. And then we come back and we have the drift roses, and then we have the uh, crepe myrtle, and we have some uh, perennial hibiscus yep, yep. behind there. And uh, there's a little bit of another liriope, I believe, over on the other side. And then the seasonal flowers. So you've got this little up and down. It's not totally like you said, building up yep, and, and yep. so forth. And like over here, we'll have the uh, coral foster uh, grasses. Mm -hmm. So they don't get overpowering, yes. but they, uh, they give you that height and they give you that wispy feel, yep. not only now, but also in the fall going into the winter time. Yep. When they do sit out here with the fireplace and the mm -hmm. fire pit, they have this interest year yep. round. Yeah. One of the interesting things about the Carl Forrester uh, grass is that it's sterile, so Correct. it doesn't set seed. Um, there are a lot of other grasses that do set seed, so, but I've noticed you've just picked the Carl Forrester here, so why have, why have you focused in on that one particular grass? Well, I mean, over the years, I guess you learn as things go, and the, the miscanthus, which we all used a lot years ago, yes. just gets too overpowering and yep. too big, and it just multiplies into this huge mess. Yep. So uh, I love the uh, Carl Foster. Yep. It's much softer. You still see the stonework exactly. behind there, which is really nice. And it's, you know, for an architectural accent, it's a great grass to use. Yep. No, and I, I just, uh, I love the transparency of it too. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, the other thing which I've noticed and I really think is an important design detail is how the stone really picks up the same masonry that's on the building. Right. So uh, and I, I just, because a lot of people just make the, the garden totally separate from the house, but you pulled it together. Yeah, we have, we, not only the uh, hardscape is a, uh, I call it, uh, where it's a, an element that just kind of like moves around the whole yard. So you have that continuity of flow, mm -hmm. not only in plants, but you have it in the hardscape as well. Yeah. So yeah. it makes the whole job gel together nicely. So, and I noticed too that you made the uh, the walls come up about 18 inches above the pavement. Right. So uh, as a sitting wall. Sitting wall. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so so a lot of that's not often the case. Right. So it makes it still functional on the inside 
and you've got this elevation change on the outside and you know like we were talking about you know continuity so we have the pergola over here mm -hmm. and we have the pergola back here so there again the continuity continuity of elements yep. running around the entire property yep no nope. pulls the whole garden together which i really mm -hmm. really like yes. so uh, so i i saw that there's a volleyball on the other side oh yeah so maybe we should uh, okay. see what that's all about okay yeah all they right. love to play volleyball here oh good so uh, Lisa and Rich Eknoyan are with me. They are the proud homeowners. And uh, as I've walked around here, um, I really get a sense that you like to socialize and have a good time. So is that one of the things that you told Russ when you sat, sat down initially and you said, well, what do we want in our backyard? And you said you wanted, what were, what were some of the program elements that you wanted in this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we do like to entertain from family to the kids and their friends. We've grown children and um, we just went down a whole checklist with Rusty. We said, how about a fire pit? And how about a boathouse? And what about this? What about that? How about volleyball? And we, Rusty just checked all the boxes and laid everything out in the perfect way. It was tremendous. So how, how big, because I'm looking around here, I'm thinking, there's 20 people to socialize here? I mean, how? Over in that corner, another twenty. <laughs> okay. Another twenty over there, and maybe maybe six or so on the volleyball court. I I don't know. We haven't tried to set the record yet, but it's definitely been more than twenty. Yeah. Um, I think when World Day weekend, my one son had twenty friends alone. So uh, yeah, yeah, no. it's quite a bit. No, no, that's why I enjoy about this property because it's very relaxed. Um, it's really it's just like your personality. It's calm, and it really shows that you like to socialize and interact with people. So uh, the garden fits you both. Yeah, it's so, tremendous. Yeah. It came out. It came out great, and we discover new plants ourselves every day as we walk around. It's it, yep, it's, it's it's tremendous. There's so much here. So well, thank you for allowing us to come down and photograph it, and I appreciate your time today. Our pleasure. We love showing it off. So Rusty has brought along a couple of his colleagues, which I would like him to introduce to our viewers. Mm, thank you, Bruce. This is uh, my boss, uh, president of Down to Earth Landscaping, Bill Merkler, this and our me. landscape uh, director of construction. Alex Deesing, who also happens to be a Rutgers graduate, I might add. Yes, <laughs> a few years ago, yeah. Yep, yep. So uh, how interactive were the both of you? I know Russ designed it and was here probably every day sweating out the details, waking up at 3 in the morning going, oh, I've got to remember that too. Uh, what, and I know you, you are very handy with a shovel, so <laughs> how, did, how did you become part of all this and how do you operate? Uh, well, we have weekly meetings to, to discuss um, his designs and sales and uh, we, we start off with that and then it, 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 um, once the uh, client signs with us, we go in, into further detail, then really I pass it over to Alex, who does an amazing job on, uh, on, on making it happen. Well, we knew that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Alex, what is, uh, what is your day-to-day -day role? So, so I I'm in the office usually like 6, 6.30. I like to make sure I'm there to get the guys out the door. Mm -hmm. I work with Russ, we have our weekly meetings. We say where we wanna be for the day, for the week, for the next couple of weeks. And then all that I do is I take all the information that Bill's able to give me and that Russie's able to give me, take his designs and put the guys out the door. Russie's very hands-on with what he does, which makes my job a lot easier because he's able to go out to the job sites and takes a lot of pride in what he puts in place. Sure. So uh, all that I do is I supply the materials and he really gets the rest of the work done. Okay, I like that. You're the man. <laughs> so, uh, so when you say supply the materials, now one of the things I, I've heard is that you have your own nursery. Yes. Yep. And so, that, that's a big help, I would yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, it's tremendous. So, uh, our sister company is Ocean Wholesale Nurseries. We're based out of Jackson, but we grow in Bridgeton, New Jersey and uh, Upper, Freehold, Upper Freehold, New Jersey. Um, deciduous trees and evergreens in Upper Freehold, and then all of our plant uh, container materials is produced down in uh, Bridgeton. So, and that's obviously a big part of the whole project because obviously we're with plants, but, but also you don't get held up that way because you know, you know where the plant is and yeah. you know how to sort of time it because I've, I've known and spoken to a lot of contractors and they want a plant to come at a certain period, but all of a sudden it's three weeks late or four weeks late yeah, and yeah. the whole job suddenly slows down, get messed yeah. up. So when you have your own nursery, that really expediates things, yeah, I think. Yeah, and, and Rusty helps out with planning. So he'll sit down with our growers two years before and say guys we need to add you know something uh, more birch trees or more you know I'm selling a lot of maple trees and it really helps with production and mm -hmm, it, it's, mm -hmm. it works uh, hand in hand yeah so it's, it's a great uh, opportunity for us so 
And then we're talking about here, obviously we're talking about a, a group of plants that's going to tolerate the shore conditions really well. So, um, so just sort of, sort of background for our viewers, what would some of those plants be that you, they're hard to find, but you're growing them for this type of condition? Well, obviously, you know, the grasses are a big component of the shore, along with the hydrangeas, but we have the Shasta daisies, and we have a lot of the hollies, mm -hmm. um, the Stewardia right behind us, yep. uh, Kuza dogwood, uh, the white fringe trees, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it's, you know, the Rebecca, um, the drift roses as well as uh, some of the other smaller uh, layering plants that sure, we use. Sure, sure. And, uh, and what's interesting with the Stewardia is that we're not talking about a tree that blooms in the summertime. Right. So, which is, you know, unusual in itself, because how often do you find a tree that's starting to bloom right now, which is mid-June, but also has interesting bark and great fall color. Correct. And very difficult to find large. Yes. So, so again, having your own nursery really facilitates that. It does. Um, and they're also tricky to dig and transplant, I've been told. So, uh, again, you're able to root prune and really make sure that it's ready to be moved at the time when it's ready for the job. Yeah. Yeah. So, so excellent. So, so anyway, uh, anything else you'd like to add while your boss is here? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to add that we're extremely proud of Rusty Bell. I mean, he's been with us for over 20 years. He does an amazing job, not only in his design, but the clients love him, and he loves his job, which is, is, is something that uh, you need to have as a designer, yes, that passion, and Rusty has that passion. Yep. We're, we're extremely proud of him. Thanks, Thank Paul. you, Russ. You'll be getting that raise next week. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say it, but unless uh, <laughs> you bring it up now. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure meeting you both. Yes, it's and a pleasure. And seeing you again. Yeah, so. you too. Yep. Okay, I'm here with Lisa now. Lisa, the homeowner. Nice to meet you. Welcome. And speak with you. Oh my gosh, your house is absolutely beautiful. I'm Thank sure you, you are, were a part of the design. Yeah, a little bit. We kind of uh, collaborated, of course, with Rusty and made our dreams come true back here. Beautiful. And your, your home inside, I heard this is a brand new home too. You had just Yes, built we've it. been here just about a year now. Okay. Um, of course, we started the building through COVID, so it took a little longer than necessary. But this is our, our first summer that we actually get to enjoy the backyard. Wonderful. And how did you find Rusty? Well, um, we found Rusty through our builder, mm -hmm. um, North End Builders, Dave Kinzel, and we connected when we met and we did a lot of talking about my favorite types of plants and flowers mm -hmm. and they're all here. There are. My roses and my irises and all the things that I love. And we spoke earlier about your family is very important to you and your friends and your parties and yeah, I mean. Couldn't there's, get any better than this. <laughs> you know, there's a party here just about every weekend. We just had a party on Father's Day. And speaking yeah. of, speaking of, let's <laughs> let's do a little toast here. Thank you. Aww. A toast to the summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. All right. So um, you've lived in New Jersey your whole life or just recently? I raised my kids in Wall Township, uh -huh. about 10 minutes from here. Um, we lived in Wall for 20 years, but our goal was to get to the shore. Okay. And we are just a few blocks from the ocean. We have the inlet right here, so we finally made it to the water. Nice. <laughs> so do you have any, you know, fun toys to play on the water as well? Oh, yes. We've got lots of water toys. We have two jet skis. We have a boat. Uh, my kids, I have three kids. They love to paddleboard and kayak. Nice. And all that fun stuff on the water. Nice. And Today's a perfect day for that. And what, and how could I find you on the water? What do you do? I will paddleboard. Okay. And I like to watch the kids do stuff and take pictures. All right. And I've never done paddleboarding before. How long does it take to actually get yeah, the whole balance? Yeah, it's good for your core. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm lazy, I'll just sit on it and paddle. All right. Great. So tell me about your, your beautiful, you have a bar here that... Uh, yeah, this house has lots of bars, but we had to have a little outdoor area mm -hmm. here for our guests and we love to grill. Yeah. Um, and we have a cooktop where I like to do corn or crabs yeah. All your from extras. a fresh catch. Nice. And um, yeah, we have the fire pits. You have so. a lot of 
a lot of entertaining spots. Well, this is absolutely beautiful behind us, the pool. <laughs> Thank you. And the view, I mean, it just, it's breathtaking. Thanks, we did an infinity pool, so when you're actually in the, in the pool, it looks really- Like you're in the water. You know, like you're in the water, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> great. Anything else you wanna share? Just that, you know, we built this for our family, and it's worked because they come, they come to they visit come. us quite a bit. Friends and family, that's what it's all about. Well, you have a new friend. Oh, uh, well, you're <laughs> welcome anytime. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay. So let's have a toast. Cheers. Cheers. So as we're sitting in this space, I, I, as a designer, I, I love to think spatially. And I love how you did this backyard and the front because it, it's all about spaces. And so you have large areas and small areas. So what went into your thought process as you started to lay this out as far as what would work for the social aspect of this, this garden? Well, it's, you take into consideration the entire backyard as far as a, a whole and uh, talking to both uh, the homeowners, uh, Lisa and Rich, they basically ex expressed that they wanted an area to sit around the fire pit area, so you need to have enough room to sit comfortably with several people, not mm -hmm. just a, a group with having some Anirondack chairs or mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So this holds, I don't know, eight, 12 people or more, yeah. you know, back here. And they've got different elements, different areas to sit, different niched areas. You've got, you know, the hot tub, the pool mm -hmm. area. Yes, very much. You have the fire pit area. You have the uh, outdoor kitchen area with the bar that runs along the whole side with the uh, pergola over top and mm -hmm. the down lights. And then you have the upstairs uh, sitting area, which was part of the architectural design with the sure. house and the seating area over on the other side. And everything is set up with squares and circles. Yep. Yep. So uh, architecturally, it's very pleasing to the eye. And by repeating the circle, I love how you tied it in with the seating area on the other side. So that repetition of form really has a calming right. effect. Right, yeah. Yes. And, and, and I think you can see that we've used different material. Azac here, mm -hmm. it was first designed with stone and then more blue stone cap, but R Rusty changed it. And yep. I, I think it turned out really well. Yep. Yeah, yep. excellent job. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Again, it was the, uh, the continuity of elements So yes. we used they had it on the back of the house, mm -hmm. so we brought it out here, and then we used it on the uh, the fascia part on the outdoor kitchen. Perfect. So Perfect. you'd have that continuity. Yeah. So yeah, you two have done a, a stellar job here. Thank it you. Was, it was all rusty. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think I still think there's teamwork, but yeah. great job, yeah, Rusty. We, uh, thanks, great team. So one of the things I really like about the front yard is how you created this entry space. Because a lot of people just take a walk. It goes from there to there. And then often the stairs here are obviously bigger, but they don't make them as broad as that. So this really ties in really nicely and brings like a, a nice reception area. And I always think the front is such an important part because this is going to get the hellos, the goodbyes, the hugs, the handshake. This is the social part of the, of the front yard, don't you think? Right, exactly. Uh... Yeah, I was always taught and I try to uh, keep all the jobs where the front is the invitation to the front door and I mm -hmm, try to capture mm -hmm. that by the way I do my landscaping with things taller on the sides yep. coming down and I love the larger landings yes. uh, especially when you have a large space right here yep. it really helps uh, bring things together yep. and then we have the you know beautiful planters yep. out yep. here to you know make everything beautiful entry yes so. yes and we were also talking before about lighting and which obviously right now you can't tell, but there's a lot of, of nighttime lighting worked into here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked a little bit about how you actually layered the lighting, so to speak. Uh, do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I mean, we have, you know, basically, I guess, three components. We have the path lights that come up along the uh, walk areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have the down lights where we use the integral lights on some of the field stone walls mm -hmm. that kind of just shine down very softly. Uh, and then we have uh, some well lights that have the, uh, the brass uh, cover with the glass so mulch and debris doesn't get inside it. Important. But they basically light up the trees and they light up the accents where the columns are. So there's lighting on the front and on the back side so you get that depth of lighting uh, throughout the whole design. And that's a, a, oftentimes lighting is overdone. 
And so the fact that, and I've seen the pictures of this house at night, it's beautifully laid out. That just gives you that wonderful evening invitation. So everyone thinks about the daytime and then the lighting is always an afterthought. Here you've actually worked it in as part of the design. So, yes. so uh, this has been a great day, Russ. Thanks for inviting us down. And, and thank uh, you for coming. No, I appreciate yes. the walking around yes. and all that you've educated us all about. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, Bruce. This Another was, wonderful day, this huh? This was a great day. This was a great day. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, we're so happy that we got a chance to meet you. Yeah, it was a and pleasure meeting you guys. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And Thoroughly yes. enjoyed it. I you. mean, the, the work you did was fantastic, Thank you. but also very educating to us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, and just to, to, to show how successful it is to see everybody enjoying it and swimming and yeah. playing volleyball yeah. and yeah. seeing how active it really does work. And that's the important part. So yeah. Uh, yeah. did a great job. Thank you. Thank so, you. Do you want to take a dip before we leave, Bruce? Uh, I don't think I have the right clothing for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. Thank you. And Bruce, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. There we go. Thank you. Okay, I'm here, we're watching a volleyball game. I'm with Lisa and Carolyn, and the girls are enjoying their drinks. How can you keep track of the game when you're having your little drinks there? Oh, uh, we're used to it with a lot of kids. <laughs> Comings and goings all the time, busy. Busy house here. So Carolyn, are you family or friend? I'm Lisa's sister-in-law. Oh, okay, well there yes. you go. So you're here a lot. Every weekend. Every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. always a party, right, it's Carolyn? Always, right, right. That's wonderful. So, um, any children here today with you? I have four children. You too. Two girls and two boys. And are they here playing volleyball or? Just Sarah, my youngest. Okay. Today, uh, the others are working. All right. So. And John is my husband's brother, her husband. Oh, okay. Yep. Very good. The king of the volleyball. Well, mm -hmm. this is such a beautiful view. I'm glad I climbed up the back of your chair. <laughs> I'm glad you did too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. You too. Hi, Aaliyah. How are you? Good. How old are you? Six. You're pretty good at swimming. Did you take lessons? Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. Show me what you can do real quick. <laughs> wow. Good job. Swim back. Perfect. Is the water nice and warm in there for you? Yeah. Yeah? What do you like better, the pool or the jacuzzi? The jacuzzi. You like the jacuzzi better? I, I like the pool better. You do? Okay. All right, wave to the camera. Okay, ladies, I think this is your drink, and this is yours. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So you're, you're part of the famous group now here. So tell me your name. I'm Rachel. I'm Maria. Okay, Rachel Maria. If I would have known we would have had this type of pool, I would have definitely brought my suit. Yeah, we made sure it was heated. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Look at this sun. Beautiful. Beautiful. You're from the area? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm a teacher and in the area. Teacher? And you? Yeah, I live in the area too. You live in the area too? Lucky, lucky, lucky girls, I'll tell you. All right, well, I mean, everybody's watching us, right? Yeah, they're jealous. <laughs> jealous. <laughs> okay. Everybody wave. How you doing? Good. Now, is this something that you like to play um, regularly, or is this just for here? Uh, it's just for here. Just for here? I'm not really a professional. You look pretty good at it, though. Good job. How'd you get your skills? My skills? Yeah. Probably dates back to grammar school, you know, playing in gym class. Okay. And then it's nice to have a, you know, beach volleyball in your backyard. My name is Chris. Chris? Yes. All right. You look pretty good at doing this here. Thank you. I appreciate All right. it. Okay. Tried my best. Are you the volleyball player? I heard that you were the one. <laughs> no, no, no. But I do love playing. You do love playing. Well, you're, you're very good at it. Yeah.